A few weeks ago, Sam Woodhull put out a video creating a full screen Twitch alert in Apple Motion. It was part of a series where he created a Twitch alert in DaVinci Resolve, Apple Motion, and Adobe After Effects. I only make tutorials for DaVinci Resolve, and I saw plenty of fine folks hanging out in the comment section of Sam's video asking whether it was even possible to recreate that effect in Resolve. And I'm here to tell you, yes, it is. And I'm gonna show you how. As always, we're gonna start here inside DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. Oh, it's good to be back. And I've already created a new timeline, 1080, 60 frames per second. And next, we're going to drag in our images. In the description, you'll get a download link to a zip folder containing these seven images. These are TIFF images with an alpha layer. But what we're gonna do is select all of these, drag them into our media pool, and because they are numbered sequentially, Resolve will recognize them as an image sequence. And if we pull those into our preview window, you will see that the entire sequence is only seven frames long, and each frame is one of those images. Next, what we're gonna do is click back on our timeline and drag the fusion composition effect from our effects library onto our timeline. Then we can make sure that it's selected, mouse over it, and open the fusion page. By default, the only thing you will see is your media out node, but we are going to drag that image sequence we just brought in onto our workspace. And if we preview that, this will only play for a few frames before the sequence ends. So what we're gonna do is select that media in, come over to our inspector and check loop. And then if we scroll through our timeline, you'll see that it continuously cycles and loops through all of those images. Then we're gonna come up here to effects library, click that, open the tools and scroll down to where it says particles. If we click on that, we'll see all the possible nodes that relate to the particle engine inside Resolve. This is a key distinction to what you saw in Sam's video in Apple Motion. In that, the particles was an entire contained system. And here we have all of these different nodes that can affect the particles we create. So if you want the particles to be affected by a force, you need to add that node. If you want the particles to bounce, like what we'll see soon, you have to add that node. Logical. So to get started, we are going to click this P emitter node and then instantly click this P render node. That will connect those and I'm gonna connect the media out of the render into our main media out node. And since we have that pulled up in our second viewer, if we scrub the timeline, you will see that the default P emitter effect just creates these small white dots in the middle of our screen. But what we're gonna do is take that emitter, move over to the style controls and change the style from point to bitmap. And if we look at our emitter node, we'll see that it has added this yellow triangle for an input. That's a style bitmap for this emitter. And if we drag the media out of this image sequence we made into that yellow input, we'll instantly see that it is pulling data from that image sequence to replace those particles. If we scrub the timeline, you'll see that every frame, all of those particles are changing to what was in that image sequence. And that is because we need to come over to where it says animate change that from overtime to particle at birth. Next, we can jump over to this region control. This region is the area in which particles will spawn. So we're gonna change that to cube, increase the width, pull the depth down to zero, the height down to zero, so that particles will only spawn along this line. And if we preview that, you'll see that over time, particles just fill up that entire space. And we're actually gonna drag that line to just over the top of our screen. Then back in controls, we're gonna to come to velocity, turn up that velocity and change the angle to negative 90. And now if we scrub, we'll see that those particles are spawning and floating down the screen. The first thing I'm gonna to do to address the style is to pull down this number down to two and then come back to style, size controls and pull up this size so that each of those icons are now much more visible by themselves on screen. Next, we're actually gonna drag apart this P emitter and P render nodes, select the emitter, and we are going to add in the middle of this space, P directional force and P bounce. Bounce, 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 bounce. And this is actually as complicated as our node tree will get for this effect. It'll just be a matter of dialing in the controls among these three nodes. In directional force, by default, it is pulling particles down. So I'm just going to increase that strength a little bit. And in bounce, we're gonna navigate instantly to a region. By default, it is just a line, but we're gonna change that to cube, kind of like our emitter, stretch that width out, 
and pull that down to just below the bottom of the screen. And if we preview, we'll see our particles falling. They'll hit that barrier on the bottom and bounce way up into our scene. Back in the control section of our bounce, we have these main controls for how bouncy this surface is. The main one being elasticity. If we pull this down, we'll see reflected in our preview that the particles coming off the bounce will only bounce so high before that directional force starts to affect them again and then they will come back down a second time. I'm gonna increase this variance so that there is some difference in how high these bounce, and I'm also gonna increase this roughness to add some randomness to the bounce direction once these particles hit this barrier. And I'm gonna give it just a little hair of spin. And speaking of spin, I'm gonna go back to my P emitter and under my main emitter settings, I'm gonna come down to rotation and just increase the Z variance just a hair. And you'll notice that when our particles are falling at the very beginning, all of them are falling straight down. So under our velocity, I'm going to change the angle variance. I'm gonna crank that up a significant degree, somewhere 50 to 60. And then you'll see the particles are not all falling straight down, they're all falling with a little bit of a different arc. This is looking much closer to what we want, but you'll notice that with the settings we now have, these particles will just keep on spawning forever. forever. So I'm gonna go back a little ways into this main spurt of particles and I'm gonna set a keyframe for the number. Then I'm going to move forward just a few frames and pull that down to zero. Now if we scrub through you'll see these particles fall and then they die out. I'm actually gonna crank up this initial number to three and open my spline viewer and check that number and pull this second keyframe out so it takes a little bit longer for those particles to die out. So there's more of an initial wave than just a few particles before it stops emitting. Now we're getting into some of the area of taste. I have a few more settings I'm gonna mess with, but from here on out, you can start to create the look however you want it to look. If you want it to be more bouncy, if you want more particles, if you want larger or smaller particles, and you can tune it to exactly what you want. I know I only want my particles to exist a little after this first bounce. So I'm gonna pull down the lifespan of these particles until I start to see them popping out of existence. And then I'm gonna come over to style, go to fade controls and pull this out just a hair in. Now if we preview, we'll see those particles bounce and then they start to fade out. And then just tweaking for my style, I'm actually gonna pull up the force of this gravity, this directional force just a little bit and pull down the elasticity of this bounce so that the particles fall, bounce, start to fall back, and fade out just as they start to fall back to the ground on that second bounce. And I'm gonna pull up the size just a hair as well. We want this to have quite a splash when it comes on screen. Once you have a motion you like, I like to go into P Render, come over here to Settings, and toggle on Motion Blur. With a quality, I think around six looks pretty good. Motion blur will always increase the power needed to preview each frame, so it's normally something I like to toggle on right before export. For a smooth playback, I'm gonna jump over into the edit page where I can see this red bar slowly change to blue as the effect is cached. Now I can play it back full motion, and the one thing I see to my eye is that these particles are still fading out really quickly. So I'm gonna hop back into my fusion, come to my emitter, fade controls and increase the out so that the fade begins a little sooner in their lifetime. To preview that real quick, I'm gonna to toggle off this motion blur so I can scrub through my timeline and see when those particles start fading out. That looks a bit better. I'll toggle on motion blur and then catch that in the edit page. And here I have a motion I really like. You have this massive wave of bits that slowly dies out, bounces along the bottom of the screen and then fades away. So in just a few minutes with a very simple node tree infusion in this free software, we have created this dynamic and interesting and high energy Twitch alert. And we are just scratching the surface of what the particle system inside the fusion page can do. We're asking the system to do some basic things here, but the system can do so much more. In the free templates that come with fusion, it even shows off this particle system simulating a burning jet engine. It's wild, it's crazy powerful. And it's one small part of this free software DaVinci Resolve. Creating this animation has me so excited to explore the system further and see what all of those different particle nodes do. 
So if you want more tutorials diving into the particle system inside Fusion, please let me know with a comment below. Or if there are any different styles of alerts or transitions that you would like me to check out, let me know that too. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.